Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be the semi-final match for the UBL playoffs and this is a really exciting match. It's going to be our second match against the Bullet Punch Club, being drafted by Uzi Gunner. He had the first seed, he had a bye in the playoffs. We did end up winning this matchup the first time around, however, I didn't actually play Uzi Gunner. I played Six Foot Hacks playing in his place and this was a match where I kind of struggled with the team build because I didn't want to bring the same six that I brought the last time. I wanted to be a little bit more creative and I didn't know exactly what he would do. He ended up bringing the same six that came to the first matchup, but even beyond bringing different mons, like for example, I don't have the Delphox, which I definitely did consider like quite a bit. I definitely did consider uh, a scarfed Delphox quite a bit, which looks like would have put in a lot of work against his team. But in the long run, I do think that the six that I brought the first time were the optimal six to bring in this matchup and it probably would have been the optimal six to bring this time however i really did want to bring uh something different to the table so i did bring out the jolteon instead of the delphox and uh, my meloetta set is completely different last time i brought a pirouette meloetta this is a straight up specs meloetta so as far as leads go i just threw out the jolteon to start off with and my thinking here is just that it's going to be able to get myself some early damage and in all honesty i brought it mainly to see if he brought the mega blastoid in this secondary matchup he didn't um probably just because of the mega venusaur but uh, right from the beginning these predictions are just not going my way i'm thinking he does have the obvious switch into nita queen he does have the obvious switch into decidueye and so i didn't want to just start going for the thunderbolt damage straight away and i did kind of want to stay in in case he did try to like thunder wave or whatever the case may be but ends up throwing out the light screen uh, he stays in for a couple turns as i do try to hit it with a thunderbolt and then as soon as i start trying to hit it with a volt switch and try to get start to get some momentum him. That's when he starts making the hard reads and going into the Nita Queen. He stops at, I believe, just one layer of spike. So I did kind of expect him to stay in, get another layer, but that's, like I said, when he does make the aggressive switch. I switch into the Latios and then double into my Venusaur. Just hoping to, like I said, get some momentum going my way because as it stands right now, I just feel really behind. He does have some pretty solid switches to everything that I want to do right now. And I take this opportunity to make another aggressive switch uh, into my Greninja, I believe, as he goes back into his Nita Queen, not the switch I was expecting, I don't think. Uh, but no, yeah, I don't remember what I was expecting in that situation. In any case, I believe I switch again. Yeah, I go back into my Jolteon once again. This is going to be just, I, I believe we both triple switch in this situation, which is kind of wild. As he goes into uh, his Uxie. And here I just take the opportunity to, to get a Vol switch off. I'm just trying to like get some solid footing because um, I do like my threats in general. I do have that Dragon Dance Latios, like I said, and um, that Specs Meloetta. But uh, obviously, the Specs Meloetta has some impediments as to just click, being able to click Psychic or click Shadow Ball or click um, Hyper Voice. Either way, it just kind of gets walled a little bit, so I do need a lot of setting up for that Meloetta, and my uh, Latios needs just to set up Dragon Dances, and my uh, Venusaur needs, to, needs a chance to set up a Curse, so there's a lot of switching, just trying to get myself in a position for something like that, and uh, as of right now, it's just not working at this point. Uh, I do end up calling a switch as he goes out into his um, Infernape, I do get the knockoff off and it does in fact reveal a Zeme crystal on it. Uh, and then this is an interesting situation. So I actually end up crit paralyzing his Sidueye, which is unfortunate. And then um, I knew that another that a Shadow Ball going in here wouldn't be able to take it out, but I know that I need that damage, especially when the Sidueye was a big um, thing impeding my Meloetta from doing anything late game. I needed this damage, absolutely. Um, and he gets off the roost, but this is a situation where I kind of feel like I can play this game because I'm either playing for a full pair, I'm playing for a spitf drop, or I'm playing for a, a crit. Either way, I kind of believe that I'm going to end up winning this exchange at some point as he does get fully paired this turn. And this is actually where he reveals a, the Shadow Sneak. So he was letting me deal life orb damage to myself so that he so i would put myself in range for him to take me out with a shadow sneak which is unfortunate i'm not gonna lie um but 
At this point, it's not going to be the end of the world, I don't think. I end up just going into the Malouetta, and he doesn't quite know yet what, what I'm doing with this thing, but I do just end up going for the Shadow Ball, which does a lot of damage to this Uxie. And I do reveal specs look pretty clearly at this point, but uh, I just go for the Shadow Ball again. Um, I wanted to take this thing out. Just go into the Weavile. Now, this is a play where I absolutely should have predicted this. I should not have gone for a pretty obvious uh, second Shadow Ball when it was pretty clear that I was locked in at this point. That was a pretty unfortunate play on my part, but I just end up switching out to the Mega Venusaur, which was probably my best answer to this thing. He goes for the knockoff. It's totally fine. I know I'm in a solid position. I go for a synthesis on this next uh, turn, just trying to get myself in a position where I can curse up. And he goes for the Ice Crash, I believe. Yeah, there's the Ice Crash. I live on a few percent. And he ends up getting the flinch as I try to synthesis up again, trying to get myself in a position to curse. Because uh, at that point, I know I can start uh, claiming KOs if I can curse up and um, kind of start to uh, take on his team. It does handle his team decently well. Just Power Whip, uh, Earthquake, Synthesis, and Curse, which is pretty much the same set that I brought last time. I, I believe this time it's a bit more especially defensive so that I can curse up and just kind of put myself in a good position to be able to um, take hits on both sides and to synthesis up, hopefully, but I never ended up getting that opportunity. So I ended up going into T'Challa here, and I wish, I so, so wish that I had gone for that uh, Dark Pulse, but at this point, I, I did end up just going for the Surf, the safe, the super safe Surf. Um, and at that point, I really needed to start making plays to even get another foothold into this match. But I knew that the Shadow Sneak was coming, and I try to make a tiny bit of a play. I go f into my Meloetta to be immune to the Shadow Sneak, which was fairly obvious, and I did attempt to U-turn there. And uh, I missed out on the KO. It was probably a roll. It, it, it does end up on 3%. Um, I wish I'd been able to take that out. It would have been so, so huge to be able to take out this uh, Decidueye in this situation. But he ends up Spirit Shackling into my... Um, into my Meloetta. If I had just held my ground and gone for like a Psychic or something or, or a Shadow Wall or whatever the case may be, I could have at least taken out the Decisioye. And uh, I don't know, it was a weird play in my mind to go for the Spirit Check on that situation, but I guess he, I've been switching so much that at that point he just expected me to um, switch out or, or U-turn or something like that. So it was super, super unfortunate uh, to miss out on the KO and for him to just completely read my entire career um and at this point I know that the match is well beyond me having any chance to get back into it um and I did end up blocking myself in a psychic which was completely silly there was no reason to do that because uh the weave was in the back and I didn't even try to make an aggressive switch after I revealed that um at this point I knew it was over it was well beyond over um, my, at this point, my Latios didn't have a chance to do anything. My, uh, Mega Venusaur, I tried so hard to put my Mega Venusaur in, in a solid position to do something. And uh, my Meloetta couldn't do anything either. I just needed, um, something to open up a door for something else. If I had been able to handle that Decidueye better, it could have opened the door for my Meloetta. If I'd been able to, um put myself in a position to curse, it could have dealt with a, with a whole lot of his team. Like that curse um, Venusaur uh, in our first matchup was crucial against the Clef Keem. It ended up being able to take on the Decidueye and the Decidueye getting paralyzed would, would have been huge in that situation, even though I would have been cursing my, my speed down, but who knows what could have happened. Um, if Mega Venusaur was my best answer to that Weavile, um, and just in general, it could have, it, heck, it could have taken on that Infernape, it could have had a lot of fun in this match, but really all I needed was a few mods to go down to open the door for other mods. In any case, this was a fantastic opportunity with a lot of fun. Uh, just being a part of it, making it to the playoffs, having the most fun round one playoffs that I could imagine and then uh, moving on to the semifinal match. It was a complete blast, and uh, I couldn't thank everyone involved 
more. But with that, that's season. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again out.